Welcome back to the Student of the Game podcast. Once again, thank you all for tuning in. Please hit that like and subscribe button. It's free of charge. Okay, so okay, so Marvel Studios executive producer Nate Moore, he says they avoid writers who are hardcore comic book fans. I think most of us were, was already aware of that. Now, you could take this two ways. When I first saw this, okay, well, Nate Moore, he must be a freaking scroll, okay? Because, I mean, why would you hire writers who are not hardcore comic book fans, right? But when you think about it, when you think about it, okay, at the same time, when you hire somebody who's, when you only hire writers who are hardcore comic book fans, you know, you're not asking them to write a comic, you're asking them to write a movie. So you have a lot of mo real good movie directors and writers and everything, you know, they probably didn't grow up reading the comics, or watching the animated movies or whatever, you know? But does that mean they're not good writers? Does that mean they're not good directors? Does that mean they are incapable of doing an adaption of, of anything that's in text, like a comic book or a novel or a graphic novel, and converting it to a movie? No, you know? Because here's the thing. What he said also mentions in the article is that now a lot of them, you know, once they get hired, they study the material and they see where they can make a movie. You see what I'm saying? So I think the, the headline is a little bit mis misleading. Like this was totally straight up suck. If, you know, you come in, you're not a hardcore comic fan. All right. Now you're just making your movie blindly and you're not looking at any of the source material. Now, the thing about it is, is that even with that, you know, some of the best Marvel movies, even DCEU movies, some of the best movies, you know, they they take stuff from the comics, but they don't take everything like they do more like a like a remix. OK, where they modify certain things like, for example, in Infinity War, in the comics, that was, you know, Hulk's role was Silver Surfer's role in the comics where he warned um, the Avengers and everyone about Thanos. OK. So they 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 change up some things in there. It's kind of like if you're a fan of the Walking Dead series, you see that well, certain characters who die a certain way in the comics, they don't die that they don't have that same type of death in the in the show. Because if they did that, then it'll be too predictable, right? Then it's like you know what? I'll just go read the comic. That's because that's what you're doing anyway, you know. But the way I look at this, you know. I think about, and I'm making another basketball reference, but you got to excuse me. I'm student of the game for a reason, all right? I talk about best. I talk about sports, movies, and TV shows, all right? I came to dream Elijah one, all right? One of the greatest centers ever, ever. Probably, to me, the best two-way player ever to play in the game. I mean, you know, got no time to argue. So if you disagree, whatever. So he didn't grow up playing basketball. Seven foot tall, did not grow up playing basketball. Basketball was not his love. It was not his passionate sport, okay? He loved soccer. And in soccer, guess what? He developed quick feet. You know what I'm saying? Awesome footwork that nobody can duplicate, all right? Not in, somebody that's seven foot tall. Now he, once he, now, he learned to play basketball, but guess what? He brought, he mixed in his footwork that he learned from soccer, with basketball. That's why when you saw Akeem Olajuwon, he's the only center that's crossing uh, crossing other bigs over. Okay? I believe it was Penny Hardaway. He said, man, Akeem Olajuwon, it was like a small forward as a center. That footwork, like nobody else had that. Go back and look. In the era of big man, dream dominated. Hitting fadeaway jumpers. Footwork looking like Michael Jordan. Okay? This, you know, it's a reason why. Your Kobe Bryant's, God rest his soul. Your LeBron James and other NBA players, okay? When they want to learn the post game, guess who they go to? Hakeem the Dream Elijah one. You have guards going to a big man. Hey, man, how do you do that? Because he has the footwork of a big man. Hakeem the Dream Elijah one was literally the 2K players that you create that seven feet tall that can do damn near everything. Everything. You say he can't shoot three-pointers. Well, he wasn't in the three-point era, but I guarantee you he would have learned how to shoot three-pointers. So I bring that back to this whole conversation right here with, with Nate Moore and stuff, where it's like, okay, you got plenty direct, like, 
Okay, you, you take Quentin Tarantino, for example. I'm not sure if Quentin Tarantino, his knowledge on comic books, it might be certain characters he has knowledge on. I'm not sure. But you mean to tell me if Quentin Tarantino directed any Marvel character, you mean to tell me you're not going to watch that movie? You mean to tell him, you mean to tell me that that movie like doesn't have a high probability of being dope? Spike Lee. OK, you know what I'm saying? I mean, other actors, Antoine Fuqua, <laughs> Fuqua, you know, I mean, other directors out there, you know, um, just because they're not hardcore comic fans that they can't direct a, a dope comic movie. Come on now. You know, but once again, what Nate Morris, he also he mentioned in this article, he said, hey, you know. They learn more about the material once they're hired. And that's the truth. That's the truth. And, 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 and the thing about it, to be honest with you, most of us who watch the movies, most of us who watch the movies, I'm not talking about the because you got some real hardcore fans out there and I respect everything they do, everything they contribute and add to this because it's a lot that, you know what I'm saying, that I didn't know until I listened to their channels. You know, you got your... You, you, um, you got your, everybody know Rob Jefferson, right? Comics Explain, you know what I'm saying? You know, everybody, everybody knows Steel Butler, you know what I'm saying? Um, everybody knows uh, um, um, Young Ripper Five Nine, you know, everybody knows them, the comic historian, you know, all of these people, you know, Cosmic Wonder, all of these people, you know, and if I fail to mention anybody, I'm sorry, but um, the thing about it is, is that a lot of the YouTube channels where it's, where it's dedicated to the the comic, the source material, we learn a lot from them, you know, but the majority is not them. But, and that's what's so awesome. That's why they're able to have a lot of followers, I believe, because they're teaching a lot of people, you know, that's why I follow the hell out of those channels, yo. But, um, you know, it, making it uh, uh, with the comics, like you, you tr you're making a movie too, you know, so you, you, you take the movie Black Adam. Yeah, it's not comic book accurate, but I mean, you got The Rock, a superstar. You got the Dwayne The Rock Johnson right there. So you know what? You, you, you're going to tailor, you're going to make Black Adam fit into Dwayne Johnson more than you make Dwayne Johnson fit into Black Adam. You, you get what I'm saying? That's what you do in that situation. Um, you got some situations where you got, man, like Ryan Reynolds with Deadpool. That was, that was just like a match made in heaven. You know, Tony Stark and Robert Downey Jr. match made in heaven. All right. You know, Chadwick Boseman and T'Challa match made in heaven, man. You know, now with that said, that doesn't mean nobody else is, in, is not capable of playing those characters. I'm just saying the current iterations of those characters, it's like the perfect match. But anyways, um, yeah, it goes to show, hey, you know what? You can come from all. You can you, you you can come to you can you can come from a lot of different backgrounds and guess what you know what you can write a comic you know because everybody you know you can write a comic you can make a comic book movie because it's always you know because it it allows you what's the, man how do I say it? it it allows you to be able to think outside the box right. It allows you to be able to think outside the box. Now, Nate Moore says that now he is a comic book nerd and stuff. Now, from my understanding, so is Kevin Feige. So I think that's a great thing because you got these two, these two men, these two guys here. OK, I'm not saying that only two, but these two guys here. Guess what? They have a lot of knowledge of the source material and they are overseeing everything to make sure it's connected to something. OK, so I think that's cool right there. But hey, yeah, man, it's nothing wrong with that. Trying new things. It's nothing wrong with that, you know? But when you look at the headline, it's like, okay, well, well, we we knew that based on certain movies. It's like, yeah, you know, it's like y'all don't care about the source material on some of them. But you know. But anyways, share your thoughts in the comment section below. I'm uh, um I'm gonna drop the link for the um the article in the comment section and y'all let me know what y'all think please hit that like and subscribe button student of the game podcast peace out